Section 1.5, Parent Functions and Translations. Our first parent graph, the graphs that you need to know, is y equals 3. And that is a line where y is equal to 3. This is a horizontal line. Then we have the identity equation, y equals x. And that is a line with a uh, y-intercept of 0 and a slope of 1. So it is this line right there. We have y equals x squared, and we have, if we square 0, we get 0. If we square 1, we get 1, so we get the point 1, 1. We square 2, we get 1, 2, 3, 4. We square 3, we get 9. So there is half of the parabola, and then the other half is on the other side of the y-axis. So there is a parabola, y equals x squared. We also have the cubic, y equals x to the third. 0 to the third is 0, 1 to the third is 1. 2 to the third is 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 right there. So there is half of uh, the, the graph. And then negative 1 to the third. Negative 1, negative 1 to the third is negative 1. So we have negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, uh, negative 8 down here. So there would be the other half. There's the parent function y equals x to the third. We have y equals 1 over x, which is the reciprocal function. If we plug in 2, we get a half. So we plug in 2, we get 1 half. We plug in 3, we get 1 third, and so on. So if you plug in 1, you get 1. Plug in 2, you get a half. Plug in 3, you get a third. That's the reciprocal. But then if you plug in a half into 1 over x, multiply the top and bottom by 2, you get 2. So you have 1 half 2, you have 1 third 3, and so on. So a half would be 2. A third would be 1, 2, 3. So we'll get closer and closer to the y-axis, but never touch. And then on the negative side, negative 1 would give negative 1. Negative 2 is negative a half. Negative 3 is negative a third. So we'll approach the x-axis forever and never touch. And we'll approach the y-axis, but never touch. Here we already have the absolute value graphed. Uh, there is the, the right branch. And then here is the left branch. And you get that because if you plug in negative 1, you get a positive 1. You plug in negative 2, you get a positive 2. And that same thing will happen on the other side. You plug in 1, you get 1. Plug in 2, you get 2. And we get this V formation, V graph. Square root. Well, we can't square root negative values, so we'll only be on the right side of the y-axis. Square root of 0 is 0. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 1, 2, 3, 4 is 2. And you got to go all the way out to 9 to get 3. So this is the graph. It goes up forever. It goes to the right forever. But it does go up really slowly. Now the greatest integer function is the biggest integer, not bigger than what you plug in. So the greatest integer of 1.2 is 1. So you have the point 1.2, 1. You have 1.3, 1. 1.4, 1. And then if you have 0.6, the greatest integer function of 0 0.6, that's 0. So you have points like 0 0.60, you have 0 0.70. So uh, here we start at 0, the greatest integer of 0, 0. But then it'll be 0 all the way until we get to 1. That's an open dot. And then we get to 1, we have a closed dot over to an open dot. Close dot, dot over to an open. Close to an open. And it goes like this pattern forever. It's a piecewise. It's a piecewise step function. There's greatest integer function. Translation, a rigid transformation that has the effect of shifting the graph of a function. We have vertical and horizontal translations. Let's graph y equals x squared. We have 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then all the way up to 9. And the same thing on the other side. So there are some points for y equals x squared. Now we want to graph y equals x squared plus 3. We have to take all of these and bump them up 3. Plus 3, plus 3 on the outside means we're going to move up 3. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, 3. So this problem moves up 3 spaces right there. Now minus 4, minus 4, all of these original ones are going to move down 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4 down here, 2, 3, 4, 4 down, 1, 2, 3, 4 here, 3, 4. So we have this parabola for minus 4. A minus 2 on the inside, a minus 2 on the inside, you got to think backwards. You would think you would go to the left, but you actually go to the right. So we're going to go right two spaces. 1, 2. So this moved over 2 to the right. 
2 to the right would be over here, 2 to the right, 2 to the right, 2 to the right, and here we have, whoops, uh, 1, 2, oh, I got to move this one here. There we go, like that, like that. I moved it 3. Then we have uh, x plus 5. So x plus 5 right there, this would be left 5 units. You got to think backwards on the inside. So we're going to take those original points, we're going to move them left 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're moving left 5 right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So here is the new parabola right there from the original. We're going from the original. Now on this one, we're going to go a right 3 and up 1. Right 3 and up 1. Maybe we'll do this one in black. Right 3 and up 1. So 1, 2, 3, and up 1. That's, we're right there. 1, 2, 3, and up 1. 1, 2, 3, and up 1 right there. These three. 1, 2, 3, and up 1. 1, 2, 3, and up 1 right there. And our graph's getting uh, quite messy, so we'll kind of stop there. Uh, how about y equals the square root of x? Let's start with that parent function. We have square root of 0, 0. Square root of 1 is 1. 2, 3, 4 is 2 and 9 is 3. So there's uh, four points for the parent. Reflect in the x-axis. If you multiply the outside of a function by a negative, that reflects over the x-axis. So that one will stay there. Reflect, reflect, and reflect. So there is negative on the outside of the function. Now if we plug, if we multiply the net inside of a function with a negative, that reflects over the y-axis. So we'll reflect over the y, reflect over the y, reflect over the y, reflect over the y. So there is that one right there, negative on the inside. Now if you put it all together, uh, we have reflect over the x-axis. So x-axis, then we go uh, not right, got to think backwards, left 2, and then down 4. So let's reflect over the x-axis. We already have that one. Uh, that's this one right here. That's that one. And then we're going to need to take that one and move it left 2 and down 4. So left 1, 2, down 1, 2, 3, 4. Right there. Left 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. Left 2, down 1, 2, 3, 4. Left 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. So there we have it right there. A vertical and horizontal stretch. Let's start with y equals x squared. So y equals x squared, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 9, 1, 4, and 9. So there's x squared. We're going to double all of, really what happens, we double all the y's. Because if you plug in, let's say x, and this is y, let's say into this one right here. You plug in 2, you're going to get 4, right? Well, now, if you plug in 2 here, you'll get 4, but then you're going to multiply that by 2, which makes that an 8. So we double all the y's when we multiply by 2 on the outside of the function. So now we're going to, if you double 0, you get 0, so this stays here. Double 1, you get 2. Double 4, you get 5, 6, 7, you get 8. This goes up to 2, this goes up to 8. So this is stretching vertically by a factor of 2. Stretch vertical by a factor of 2. Now with the blue one, we're going to take all those y's, we're going to multiply by a half. So now uh, multiply 0 by a half, you get 0. There's a half of 1, half of 1. There's half of 4, half of 4. And we need half of 9, which is 4 and a half. 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half. So we have 4 and a half. Now this is shrink vertically by a factor of 1 half. Shrink vertically by a factor of 1 half. Here we have y equals the square root of x. So let's start with 0, 0. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 1, 2, 3, 4 is 2. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Square root of 9 is 3. So here we have our starting function, and we're going to multiply 2 on the inside. So this is going to be, uh, we're going to shrink horizontally by a factor of 1 half. So we take all these x values, and we multiply by a half. So half of 0 is 0, half of 1 is a uh, half, half of 4 is 2, and half of 9 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and a half. So we have that right there. Then, if you multiply the inside by a half, this is stretch, stretch horizontally by 2. You got to think reciprocal. So we're going to take these x values, 
we're going to multiply by 2. So that goes to 2. That 4 goes to 5, 6, 7, 8. So we are stretching horizontally by a factor of 2. Graph the following. We're going to start with the absolute value. So the, the parent graph is y equals the absolute value of x. Let's start with that. So we have here, absolute value of 1 is 1, 2 is 2, 3 is 3, 4 is 4, and so on. So here's the parent right here. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. So here we have the other side. And we're going to stretch vertically by a factor of 3. We need to multiply all these, by, all these y values by 3. So we stay here. Let's see, 1 goes to 3, 2 goes to 3, 4, 5, 6, maybe we can fit one more. 1, 2, 3 goes to 9, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right there. So it's going to be the same on the other side. And then we're going to go left 2, oh, whoop, whoops, we're not on that one. Uh, we're going to go right 3 and up 2, so right 3 and up 2 from there. So write 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, up 2. Uh, 1, 2, 3, up 2. 1, 2, 3, up 2. That one's off the map. 1, 2, 3, and up 2. And then 1, 2, 3, and up 2 right here. So this is the transformation right there. Then we have y equals negative uh, x plus 2 to the third minus 4. Let's get rid of that. The parent graph is y equals x to the third. So we have 0, 0, 1, 1, 2 is 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right there, they have negative 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That is right there, right there. And then uh, we're going to reflect over the x-axis because of that negative right there. Reflect over the x-axis. So the 1 goes to negative 1, the negative 1 goes to 1, the 0 stays there. And then that 8, that positive 8, it goes to negative 8. That's going to be down here, and the negative 8 pops up to 8. There's reflect over the x-axis. And then we're going to go left 2 and down 4. So left 1, 2, whoops, and down 1, 2, 3, 4, right there. Left 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. Left 2, down 1, 2, 3, 4, right there. Left 2, down 1, 2, 3, 4. And then uh, finally, down here at the bottom, left 2, down 1, 2, 3. That'd be way down here. Uh, so we have, let's see, we're going through that one. Actually, we're going through it like this, and then like that. There we go. Describe how the graphs of f of x equals square root of x and g of x are related. Then write an equation for g of x. So if this is f of x, g of x is f of x uh, translated, it looks like uh, up 1. So g of x is equal to square root of x plus 1. On this one, uh, g of x is f of x reflected over x-axis and left 1. So it's uh, so g of x is equal to negative square root of x, but then on the inside, plus 1. Give the equation of the translated graph if the parent graph is y equals x squared. So we have, uh, so y is equal to negative x, because it's certainly upside down now, so we're reflected over the x-axis. The parent graph has gone right 2, so that's minus 2, and then we've gone down 5. So minus 5, but the parent graph is squared. Transformations with absolute value. If g of x equals f of x, this transformation reflects any portion of the graph of f of x that is below the x-axis, so that it is now above the x-axis, which means if you have a function, let's say it's a quadratic, let's say you have y equals, uh, that'd be like x squared minus 1, let's say, and we're down here, minus 1. So there's a portion of the graph that's below the x-axis. If the new function, g of x, is the absolute value of x squared minus 1, any y values that were negative now become positive.
this transformation, uh, if you have g of x equals f of absolute value of just x, this transformation results in the portion of the graph of f of x that is to the left of the y-axis being replaced by reflection of the portion to the right of the y-axis. So if you just take the absolute value of the x only, then uh, the graph will be reflected, reflected uh, over the y-axis. So it'll still have this piece and then reflect it on the other side. Use the graph of y equals x to the third minus 4x to graph y equals absolute value of x to the third minus 4x and y equals the absolute value of x to the third minus 4 times the absolute value of x. So now on the first part, when you take the absolute value of the entire function, any values that are negative are now positive. So we're going to have this piece right here, and we're going to have this piece right there. This, that's going to duplicate. So we're going to have something like that, and over here at 2 we'll have something like this. But then all these values that are negative now become positive. So it's going to look like something like this, and then something like um, that right there. Well now, if we take the absolute value of x's, this portion over to the right of the y-axis is going to duplicate on the other side. So something like that. So that's going to be over here, like this, and like that.